Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee for Thursday, March the 11th, 2021. In accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and Offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a re result, today's committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 17, Verizon Files Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Rosenberg, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Pastor. Present. Ms. Hen. Mr. Mahumsa. Present. Ms. Rosenberg, will you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Mr. Bazemore. Present. Mr. Corns. All right, Ms. Rosenberg, will you call and note the names of uh, other staff members okay. participating in the meeting or on, on this call that you have not named? I don't see anyone else in the meeting. All right, thank you then, Ms. Rosenberg. Greetings, welcome, March the 11th. Thank you for being here. Uh, again, our agenda is on uh, board docs for your information. So we are now going to get started. I'm going to ask Mr. Bazemore to open us with an update on Kerwin and Built to Learn. Mr. Bazemore, and thank you. Mr. Bazemore, you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pastor. Can you hear me now? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Pastor, um, Chairwoman Pastor. Um, it's an honor to be here this evening, and I want to thank uh, Vice Chair Joshua Mahamza. And uh, I have a quick update on Kerwin and Built to Learn Act. Um, <clears throat> these two bills were passed last session and was um, overturned by the governor. Um, there was a veto override this year in, in, in the uh, state legislature <clears throat> of the bills. And so uh, at this point, these bills are, are passed within the state legislature uh, due to the uh, veto override. Uh, the Kerwin bill right now has a companion bill, um, House Bill 1372, that is um, making its way through the state legislature 
Um, it is the funding component <clears throat> of the Kerwin bill. And as you know, Chair, Chair, uh, Chairwoman uh, uh, Pastor, you were on the Kerwin Commission uh, funding formula work group and, and did, a, did a lot of great work there uh, during, uh, over the summer. Uh, what they're doing uh, are adjusting the timelines for um, the Kerwin bill. Uh, because of the veto override and the time that was lost, a lot of the, the, the timing of the funding um, had to be adjusted um, um, to, to the bill. Uh, so that's making its way uh, through, through the uh, state legislature, um, HB 1372. We'll keep an eye on that. Um, there doesn't seem to be any um, major concerns. Um, the Governor uh, Hogan uh, in, his, in his budget bill um, had funding in there for uh, a lot of the component components of Kerwin. Um, the state controller just had a meeting the other day in an announcement and said that our, our revenue resources look well in the state, um, largely because of the uh, federal funding that we've received, the CARES Act and now the 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 one point nine trillion dollars that's coming to to local governments uh, with that federal money that's coming in that will help help the state out in local jurisdictions and schools. Um, they 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 feel as though um, the funding for Kerwin uh, moving forward, um, you know, shouldn't be a major issue. Um, so that's what this HB 1372 is doing is making sure that the funding is in place uh, for that for that legislation. <clears throat> the Built to Learn Act was coupled with Kerwin, so when that was vetoed, um, the Built to Learn Act um, essentially was vetoed along with it. And so when that override um, took place uh, of Kerwin, then it automatically, automatically um, Built to Learn Act was passed, which is the which is um, our capital funding. Um, it's the state's portion of capital funding that local jurisdictions need to uh, build new schools, repair new schools, renovate schools. Uh, you can't move forward without the state funding. Uh, Baltimore County, we're fortunate. Uh, our funding is already in place. I've been, it has been there for the last uh, couple of years, and uh, and the uh, the county executive has been waiting. I think this was his number one priority the last couple of years uh, for the state portion. So so that's um, um, in play now, so to speak. Um, but what? What we're what we're watching now and monitoring is when will the funding be available, and uh, the uh, IAC, um, the Interagency Commission on Capital Funding uh, for the state, they just had a meeting the other day, and they were saying that um, the Built to Learn Act requires the Maryland State Authority to float bonds and 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 to you know to um, fund their portion of, of the capital funding. So um, <clears throat> we weren't able to get a specific timeline at that meeting the other day, um, but um, the stadium authority is, you know, we have to make sure we we, we follow their, uh, their, you know, actions moving forward because essentially they will have to float the bonds that will provide the funding uh, for, the, for the state's portion. Um, along with, and we're hoping that that won't be a long drawn out process, uh, uh, especially in Baltimore County, because we're ready to go. Um, along with that, the, the, legislate, the legislation said that that um, each local jurisdiction have to have a MOU um, with the, um, uh, I believe it's the Stadium Authority or or the IAC. I'm not quite sure. It's one of the two, but they have you have to enter into a, a memorandum of understanding for each project that you do. So um, from what from the meeting the other day. And uh, it, it seems like that, you know, that is going to be kind of a standard form um, that that local jurisdictions can fill out for each project. And hopefully that won't be too cumbersome in that, you know, the funding, um, you know, with those two things uh, taking place, the bond money and, and the MOUs being signed that we can get started on our capital projects. So but we'll, we'll definitely have to monitor that because we haven't been given any timelines uh, yet. So that 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 would be my up, my update. If there's any questions or or concerns, uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Baysmore. I was muted. All right, thank you very much for that update on both of them. Um, we're gonna move now, since there are no questions, to my MABE report. Um, there is actually no MABE report because uh, our meeting is actually Monday. Um, so the report from the last one we covered at our last meeting. So I will send out notes about that one. And uh, for the record, um, Mr. Baysmore know that I have invited Mr. Mahumza to join us on Monday for our May meeting. I am correct, it is month, this coming Monday, I'm a little date, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I, I have a, a email from Mr. Willems, which was really, um, pretty early. So yes, yeah, so I will send that information to Mr. Mahumza. Um, he knows um, that I'm going to introduce him and let him say his, make his own greeting and um, understanding Mr. Mahumza that if there are any voting issues that you won't be able to vote on this one. But I'm hopeful that before this year is up, even though I'll be there, um, we'll work in conjunction and you'll either be able to say your nay or yay for the board, but I, um, for the committee, but I want you to just experience it first, if you will. So I'm really happy and hope that you will, in fact, be able to join us for the May meeting Monday from 10 to noon. But, and I will send you that information. So that's, um, all I have to say about MABE other than, uh, yes, that it, it, because it is statewide. Um, at the last meeting, Mr. Mahomza um, motioned in this and second um, that we support the bill on the dyslexia handbook and that was voted on on Tuesday by our board and it was unanimously voted to support that. And um, I want to thank you, Mr. Mahomsa, for uh, bringing up that motion and our follow through on it. So that is it for uh, my report. And so now we're going to move on um, to any legislative updates from our February the 11th meeting. And that goes back to Mr. Baysmore. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. And I also just wanna echo Madam Chair. Um, I think that was a great um, gesture and thing to do to invite Joshua, the student member of the board to that meeting because um, that would give him great exposure. Um, right to to the uh, the work of made number one and just seeing how um, those type of decisions are made and things are looked at from a statewide uh, mm -hmm. um, position. So I, I think that's excellent. Um, that'll be hopefully he can make it and uh, just wanted to second that one. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, we had um, uh, about eight or nine bills that was uh, emailed out. Uh, Miss Allen Rosenberg emailed uh, these the bills that we went over at, at the last uh, uh, legislative meeting. And uh, so all the members have those bills. Um, I can go through them one by one, or um, if, if anyone is particularly interested in a particular bill, we can talk about those. So um, whatever, whatever your pleasure is with, with that. I'm just gonna ask you to go down the list and just um, if there's no movement, just say that if it is moved to tell us where and let's just move through them since we have discussed them already. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll start with Senate Bill 150, House Bill 181. This bill was cross filed uh, in, in the state legislature. It's the Baltimore County Board of, Board of Education election of officers. And I'll just I'll just read, read the uh, text. It says altering the number of votes required to a majority vote of the voting members currently serving for the members of the Baltimore County Board of Education uh, to elect a chair and vice chair. So this bill uh, was passed <clears throat> out of House delegation and Senate delegation and will move uh, uh, into into the uh, uh, full, full House. 
um, after um, there was a conference committee um, in, in between the Senate and, and the House. Um, if two bills uh, move, you know, that are the same that move simultaneously and they are exactly the same, then they, they go to the to the floor. When there's any difference in the bills on either side, then they have to go to a conference committee. This particular bill um, um, on the House side, what I just read, that that was the bill on the House side. But on the on the Senate side, it was the same language, but there was an amendment attached to uh, that particular bill um, on the Senate side, which um, calls for a 13th member uh, on the school board. And uh, so because that amendment is on there, then the Senate and the House will uh, put together a conference committee to work out um, the differences uh, between the two bills. So we'll continue to monitor that and see how that uh, plays out in the state legislature. Um, and th those bills were introduced by uh, Delegate Ebersole on the House side and Senator Sidnor. Uh, on the Senate side. Um, we have another bill, HB 180. Well, no, that's the same one. Uh, we have a nominating commission uh, bill that was introduced by Delegate Forbes, HB 468. Um, that bill is moving uh, through the um, House side uh, of the state legislature. Um, when it gets to crossover, um, then it will be on the Senate side and it would have to go through the same the same process. It was not cross filed. So we'll continue to monitor the school board nominating commission vacancy a procedure bill, which which basically addresses an issue um, when there's a, a vacancy on the school board. When there's one vacancy on the school board, uh, Delegate Forbes uh, noted that it took like five or six months to fill that vacancy the last time it, it happened. And uh, and so what this what this bill um, is doing is streamlining that process so that it won't take, you know, three, four, five or six months to fill up one vacancy and that they they will be able to do that um, uh, in, a, in a timely fashion, but still be open and transparent. So we'll continue to monitor that bill as well as making its way to the state legislature. And again, I want to say with all of these bills, um, they do have to cross over. I think the crossover date when one bill goes from the House to the Senate or from the Senate to the House is the 22nd and um, of, of March. Um, the Senate Bill 655 HB 751 was 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 withdrawn by the um, the sponsors. This was an oversight by the Baltimore County Office of the Inspector General bill. That bill was withdrawn uh, on the Senate side and the House side by those uh, sponsors. Um, let's see. We have uh, HB 1197, which is a legal counsel and chief budget analyst bill that is making its way uh, on the House side. There is no, uh, hasn't been cross filed. Um, it's making its way through the House delegation and we will continue to monitor that. This is a bill that would establish, uh, uh, I believe, a full-time legal counsel and full-time chief budget analyst for the for the school board. Uh, so we'll continue to monitor that bill as well as it makes its way um, through the on, on the House side. Uh, early literacy and dyslexia practices. Uh, Madam Chair spoke about that earlier. Uh, I believe Joshua uh, Mahamza, our student board member, testified at this this hearing, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, this bill is to uh, have a stakeholder advisory group uh, um, put together to develop a, a reading uh, a handbook for for dyslexia. Um, this bill has has been cross filed um, on the Senate side and is on the House side and is moving uh, its way through the legislative process. We'll continue to monitor um as that moves forward and i believe the last bills i wanted to that we talked that we spoke about at our last meeting was the uh, um the resource officers bill um school police school resource officers bill there's been a lot of attention given to that this legislative session and there have been three or four bills 
um, that that have uh, um, been introduced around um, SROs. And so there's, you know, opinions about the, um, um, you know, the uh, success of SROs and, and, and people that are um, very supportive of it. But then there's been some um, research of late that have come out that said in, in, in schools with SROs that um, um, there's a higher rate of arrests um, of minority um, students. So um, that data and um, has has driven a whole new level of conversation about SROs. And so the bills that um, are being looked at now, um, Senate Bill 245, um, says is prohibiting a school resource officer from entering a, uh, a school building. Um, Senate Bill, I mean, House Bill 496 um, de basically defunds the SRO programs, $10 million, and shifts that money to um, mental health services. And basically, if you defund the SRO program, that, that kind of uh, nullifies that, you know, that the SRO program because it's because it's not funded. Um, there's another bill, um, HB 1089, um, that just basically wants no SROs in any schools uh, in in the state. And uh, those three bills, um, and we work closely with MABE, um, are making its way through the process. There's been a, a ton of. Um, um, testimony on both sides of the issue in the state legislature. Those hearings have been very robust. There's been police officers, uh, sheriffs, um, advocates, uh, community members that have spoke um, on on both sides of, of this issue. Um, so we'll, we are monitoring, monitoring these bills closely. Um, there's one other bill, um, HB 522 around SROs. And um, so we know that it's a hot button issue. We are well aware of it. We we have a in Baltimore County, we have a pretty robust SRO program in Baltimore County. Um, our, our SROs um, um, go through a lot of training and uh, they're in, in the school. So we will continue to monitor and update as as these bills weave its way through the through the process. And I think that's it. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Baysmore, for giving us an update. I uh, believe that Ms. Hen has joined us. Welcome, Ms. Hen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Guys, I received a meeting cancellation, so I'm glad we're still on. So. Oh my goodness. Okay. Goodness. All right. No, we're we're still on, Ms. Hen. We're still on. Um, um, Ms. Hen, the one thing that uh, I, I do want you to hear because it is it is different, um, and that is that Mr. Mahumza, of course, uh, you are always welcome as well, but Mr. Mahumza will be uh, joining us for the May meeting uh, just to be introduced to the process um, because he's not been before and to see what goes on there and to be able to hear all of the um, other county reps and um, uh, hear our, our conversation. So I know that you know that you're invi always invited, but uh, Mr. Mahomes will hopefully will be able to join me on Monday for our meeting. So that is special and I hope that he's excited about that. And um, I did let them know that the board unanimously voted on the bill connected with uh, the dyslexia handbook. And Mr. Baysmore just went through um, all of the ones we took a look at last um, at our last meeting. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to now go to our priorities. I have them up, so I can't really see the agenda. Am I correct? That's where we are now. Ms. Rosenberg, is that correct? That is correct. All righty, thank you. So what I wanted us to do is to go back and reflect. There's no need in having um, 
uh, the priorities if we are not going to address them and see where we are in session since we're one month away from the end, um, almost to the day, I believe. And as Mr. Bazemore pointed out, in another two weeks or a little less than two, um, the, the General Assembly will be um, having the crossover day. And so that marks um, um, actually that turning point towards the end and shoring up um, the bills. So to that end, I would like us to just take a little bit of time. If you are able to pull up, uh, Ms. Rosenberg did send them out, just pull, and it is on board docs, on board docs. to pull up our legislative priorities so that we can just go through and maybe if Mr. Bazemore needs to, he can jump in, but we can see what things have been addressed. Um, I'm gonna start with um, local board of education governance. You know that this is a, a major priority for MABE uh, that they prefer that where possible that all LEAs handle uh, how they are governed, that they do it within as opposed to legislative action. Um, and so our first bullet was local board governance of policy and administration. And I think that we stay on um, top of that as late as just Tuesday, just working around one of our um, policies that wouldn't come up for some time. And I believe it was Ms. Hen who brought it up. And so we will be taking a look, not just at that policy, but um, where necessary, just making sure that we are on point and moving in a direction that is going to move our system forward. Uh, local government, I'm sorry, local board control of an accountability for appropriations of the school system budget. And to that end, um, and again, um, Ms. Hen um, made a motion for a budget committee coming off of the board. And I believe that will, and Ms. Hen, feel free to jump in here, um, will start in April. You want to speak to that, Ms. Hen? You're doing a great job, Ms. Pester. So that's the, the plan. The meeting schedule has not yet been finalized, but yes, no later than April, we will be holding our first meeting. And I just want to point out that um, just in terms of uh, the record, I am looking forward uh, to working with Ms. Hen as her vice chair, she is the chair, um, because she is going to take a look at the budget um, with broad strokes. I get to take a look at it um, from having been an insider, and I think that's a good combination uh, to be able to sort of um, uh, surround our budget if you will, and us to be able to offer voice, not just um, from board perspective, but from insider perspective and to a be able to include um, uh, parental and community perspective, all of which I'm sure staff already does on some level, but I think we can get um, uh, longer legs on this, if you will. Um, so, Ms. Hen, I'm raring to go. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Likewise. Great. I'll have you on board, pun intended. Thank you. <laughs> um, adequate and equitable state funding for state mandated programs and policies. Uh, so, as we go through not just our equity committee, but through um, all of our committees and our work, making sure that we are looking at equity for all of our 
students. Now, if, if you think there's something where we want to push a little harder, you're not seeing in these last couple of few weeks for them, stop me. I don't I don't want to be the, the talking head on this. I'm just sort of reading through just um, because these were our priorities, but please feel free to jump in if uh, you see something to which you want to speak. Now, Ms. Han, I'm getting ready to call on you because this next bullet um, is about the Adequate Public Facilities Task Force. I know that you reported on that um, in January, I believe it was at our January meeting, but is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, because I'm seeing us just working through these bullets here and I'm real pleased with our work for this year. You want to add anything else to that? The only thing I'd add is that since the last um, time it was brought up in committee, um, the committee did vote to recommend it to the full board um, for endorsement and the board did pass um, thank the you. recommendation. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, and that was um, important and I think um, Ms. Hen, um, we'll, as, as things roll out, we'll get a sense because it wasn't unanimous, but um, we did get a, a significant majority, but we'll be able to make clearer, I think, for folks um, who had some questions or concerns, um, just how this is a starting place and we absolutely need to have this starting place so we can, um, better control, if you will, or have a voice in uh, how our schools fare in terms of crowdedness. Would you agree with that, that it, it, it will become clearer as it unfolds? Yes, and I will also bring an update um, from the council to see where this fits in with their agendas and scheduling. Right. Time, because I'm not sure um, where it stands, but it's in their court as to this point. Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mahomes, I'm going to ask you if you have any questions about this, um, because I thought when we did the vote that you had questions or some um, um, thoughts about this. Are you comfortable with this, that we can move on and that we are um, meeting this priority or that the county in this case is meeting our priority? You good with this? Yes, I'm, I'm fine with it. Great, thank you. All right, and this next piece, education funding. Well, Mr. Um, Baysmore has reported on this, and since we did this, um, we know that both Blueprint and Built to Learn have been approved, and as Mr. Baysmore said in his presentation, they just have to go back and and tweak a few things because the timeline is a little off. But for Baltimore County, we already had some funds that were already um, uh, put out there for us to use for this year and actually for next year. Mr. Baysmore, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, no, ma'am. Um, I think you covered it, but I did want to go back to the ad adequate public facility sure. ta task force for one second. Sure. And I just want to give a shout out of kudos um, to you, uh, Makita Scott, Chairwoman Makita Scott and Lily Rowe, um, who actually brought that up uh, about a year or so ago and reached out to the council um, to look into this adequate public facilities um, um, ordinance. And, and, and then I believe David Marks uh, led the effort and, and put that um, um, you know, piece together. And, and uh, Vice Chair Julie Hen was, did an excellent job, an amazing job, because uh, I, I actually had a chance to see all the meetings um, representing us on that tax force. So I just wanted to give that little, little bit of history there that um, we had talked about that in our legislative committee meetings about a year or so ago. Yeah, and you deserve some of that too, because you followed up uh, Ms. Rowe brought in um, a good deal of material. I mean, we really, Ms. Hen, we really uh, took a, a deep dive because all of us, I think we all are experiencing in our districts um, the, the developments coming up and impacting our schools. And we really wanted to have a voice and that was before this task force 
was initiated or instituted and Mr. Baysmore was charged with, at the time, um, Councilwoman Bevins was the chair or the president mm -hmm. of the board and um, a council. And Mr. Baysmore went out and had um, dialogue with her along this. And so then it just started happening, rapid fire. So I do believe that um, we truly can say that we were in the forefront of conversation even before the county started having conversation. We were doing that. Um, and so I want to thank the old and the new committee for the mm -hmm. work towards. Yes. Thank you for bringing it up, Mr. Baysmore. Thank you. Um, COVID-19. I'm sorry, does someone have? Sorry, just saying thank you. Oh, okay. Mr. Baysmore and, and Ms. Pester. Thank, thank you. you. Thank welcome. you. And thank you. Uh, COVID-19 pandemic for digital and distance learning. Um, Mr. Baysmore, do you want to speak on any of that? I can speak a little bit, but let me let you come in if you want to. Uh, I'll defer to you, Madam Chair. OK, all right. We know that there is conversation um, um, at the MAID meeting, and I guess I could have put this in for MAID notes um, that there was a lot of discussion about um, this, making sure that uh, we don't go backwards, that we lo don't lose uh, what we gained as a result of the pandemic in terms of um, digital and distance learning. Uh, and as it says, including broadband service. Now, as the state, you know that there were uh, counties that were in far worse shape because of the nature of those counties. Um, they didn't have towers, so they they really didn't have, uh, and I'm talking like I, I really know what I'm talking about, but those of you who know me know that I'm just quoting people. <laughs> we know I'm a techno idiot, um, but they were having um, some serious problems in terms of doing virtual learning, et cetera. So it's good that money has been put in on state level to make sure that systems are not going to fall uh, behind. And we also want to make sure that we keep our eye on funds, not just state funds, but county funds that are going to speak to giving those services um, and as it's listed here, mental and behavioral health services and staffing for our young people. And I would add, and, um, and we talked about this briefly and made as well for staff members because there are going to be a number of concerns out there that we haven't seen yet, that we haven't fathomed yet. But as our students start returning, we are going to see them. Anybody want to comment on that? Because we do have to keep our eye on, on this because it's going to be critical if we want to open up in, in August or September, open up raring to go like we should. It means from this point up through then for all of these months and the summer, we need to have our eye on or eyes on everything that's about children and staffing. Anybody want to comment on any of that? Yes. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, uh, for those comments, Ms. Basher, I think um, what I've heard as the student board member um, this year especially is just how mental health has been so important in our schools. And it's not an issue isolated in one school or one district. It's just throughout the whole county. Like I've been getting um, messages from schools on the west side, schools uh, uh, in the central area, and they've um, just students talking about how they've struggled uh, throughout the pandemic, um, feeling like they don't have access to resources or don't know who to talk to. And I think it's really important for the board to prioritize this, not just this year, but every single year and increase those services. And I think I, I, I did ask the staff members uh, if we're, are we meeting those threshold or um, those recommended uh, ratios of um, uh, guidance counselors and um, 
psychiatrists uh, to the number of students we have, and I am happy that we uh, do have more uh, uh, more than other school systems, but I hope we are going to continue to increase uh, the, uh, the number of, uh, uh, of mental health professionals in our schools. Well, I, I guess my question is, um, and I, I have to admit that uh, although I've tried to read the budget and it's big uh, and I've tried to follow um, some of the uh, legislation that has been proposed on the state level, I would like to know, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Bazemore, uh, what can you highlight some of um, um, whether it's a bill or policy that has been uh, proposed this year, especially um, for this issue? Uh, I think the one of the main things that we can focus on and highlight um, around around mental health and COVID is is the um, um, the budget. And and with Kerwin passing, uh, a big part of Kerwin and and that funding uh, bill. HB uh, 1372 that I talked about earlier that will fund Kerwin. A big part of Kerwin is mental health. Mm -hmm. It is about um, uh, uh, community schools, establishing community schools, about providing funds for mental health services, wraparound services. And so there's a um, tremendous focus um, in that area. And, uh, uh, you know, that was pre pre COVID, but now that COVID um, we're in COVID now. There's even an added um, um, push to make sure that we have funding for for those psychologists, psychiatrists, counselors, and things that we will need moving forward. Uh, because we know a lot of the um, the students, the children, um, you know, have 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 suffered un un under this. You know, the the you know emotional um, um, trauma, and and staff and teachers. Mm -hmm. So that that. And there's local bills that uh, they were. I don't have them off the top of my head right now, but there have been a couple of uh, local bills as well um, that uh, that are addressing the uh, mental health, you know, um, uh, needs. So I think this is front and center in, yeah. in a lot of what we're doing. But if we follow that 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 uh, Kerwin uh, funding bill, that will give us a really good idea of of, of the the money coming from the state in that in that area. And no, to add to that, that. We are not going, and I, when I say we, I'm speaking as a state, um, that September 30th date, enrollment date, just continues to upset me, but because it's not a real um, student population date, all right, because so many of our young people come in afterwards, but um, we are not going to be uh, held hostage, if you will, uh, for that for this past September, September of 2020, um, because everyone knows that that was fluid and that's a good thing in that regard. And also, um, I'm just, I'm, I, I think I'm sort of conflating, Ms. Hen, if you if, if you don't mind, if you do just tell me, Ms. Pasteur, stop that, stop, slow down. Um, but <laughs> I can see and I want you to, to press me on what it is that I know in terms of funding and budgets based on enrollment, because you know clearly, I I, I get that having been a school principal, but also um, we should can take a look at the materials that I have that will lay out for us um, budgetary issues that are coming out of Kerwin that go to. Um, um, funding and budgets. And also, as we talk about this particular item, know that it's not all about the personnel in terms of social workers and psychologists and counselors, et cetera. It's those things about which we even spoke at our last meeting where we did talk about um, activities like Mr. Mahomes, you just did one, and how important that was to those young people that you were there for that club. And like I do drama club, and we'll be working with drama club at Northwest Academy. Those are things, uh, virtually or otherwise, that we want to make sure we're embracing um, because those contribute to the health and welfare of our young people. So we want to stay with that. 
Am I okay, okay Ms. Ms. Ham? Because I know I'm stepping in some other territories here. No, A-okay. Um, perfect segue. I was just going to add that the formation of the budget committee um, is timely in that these are things that I expect the committee will want to discuss and to learn about um, the plans for those appropriations um, with the funding from Kerwin as well as Built to Learn. Sure, sure. And, yeah. and how we approach budgeting in that process, um, both educating board members and then understanding the current state as well as the future state, because I imagine we'll be in somewhat of a flux, which is a good situation to be in given the increased funding. Um, it's always a good problem to have, but yes, so. Yes, it, yes. We, we have our work cut out for us, for sure. Yes, absolutely. And and you, as you just pointed out, um, Ms. Hen, uh, and going to Mr. Mahomes's question, is that when you have extra, or what we call extra, it's not really extra because when you are not where you want to be, then it can't be an extra. You know what I'm saying? Now we are filling those holes and we want to make sure that we have equity in filling those old holes, that we have no extra money coming to us. It's all spent in one way or another and we want to make sure that we are getting um, everything that was intended um, out of that money. So. Thank you both for your comments. Facilities funding, I, I, I think we can certainly move through that because we do have the passage now of the Built to Learn Act. And as soon as we get the word on uh, when we can go, we're ready. We're ready to go. Um, I was happy to hear, even though that was more internal, but from funds that we've gotten in terms of the budget um, that we already had for this fiscal year, uh, that there's some work that's being done that's been needed for some of our schools for way too long. So I think we, we're, we're gonna be okay. And I know that we're gonna keep our eye on that. Um, funding and maintenance of effort, um, again, I, I think um, if you look through all of this uh, growth in local funding, how do we do it? How do we do it intelligently? Um, so we're making sure that, as was just said, that the funding is used to um, to its its best level. And we'll have some real good conversations, like when we talk about psychologists and social workers, et cetera, and I'm sort of going back. Um, I'm excited about an opportunity to speak to how you really process how many of the, any of those that you need um, and, and working with staff and taking a look at what school needs are. So you are adding up that one school, for example, needs a 0.5, another one needs a 0.2. Someone, how do you work that out so that you're working with a real number so that at the end of a year, uh, there shouldn't be any questions about or fewer questions about if we got X number of social workers, let's say, why do we still see or hear um, schools saying that uh, they are without or there's a deficit? So just um, listening to staff talking about that and, and Ms. Hen, I believe, said educating our board members um, I see that as important for us to do. So we understand that you, we can't arbitrarily assign numbers. Um, how is it that you process what those needs really are? Do I sound excited? I am. <laughs> okay, student assessments and curriculum, local decision-making authority, um, adequate state funding to support mandated assessment. Know that through CARES, and um, also through um, uh, some of the funding from Blueprint, we have been able, where it looks like duplication, it really isn't because it could be, I think I used as an example, um, bridges, for example, that for which we paid, but under CARES, um, we were specifically told by the state 
the, um, here's some tutor tutorial programs that we want you to have. This is what you need to have. And it looks like it on, on the surface, it looked like we had a duplication of efforts, but we did not because remember that money came afterwards and we didn't have to put out any money for the tutorial programs. Um, and even though there were aspects of the program that matched something we already had, it was really another aspect of the program that um, the state and federal government were saying we needed to have. So we'll be keeping our eye on that um, and how those funds come and, and making sure that we are not paying for something that is coming out of um, another funding process. Health, nutrition, and fitness. We have CEP. Can we all say yay? <laughs> so we do have CEP. And what that does, particularly right now, is make sure that not just the children who are getting SNAP and um, who would have qualified for free and reduced, but every child in a qualifying school gets fed. And that is so critically important because we always had margins and lines where children or the parents of the children just missed qualifying for free and reduced, et cetera. Um, but now if they're in a school that is a qualifying school, all children will get that breakfast and lunch. So we are moving to that end. Student behavior and discipline. I'm just going to scroll through this now. Um, school safety and security, charter schools and federal education funding and policy. Anyone on the committee, Mr. Baysmore, any of you have any thoughts on any of these that I just scrolled through? Well, I, I'd just like to, to say, um, uh, Mad Madam Chair, that the, the federal funding that we've received have, has been a big help um, in funding a lot of these initiatives. Uh, one of the things um, that they're saying about this new federal funding that's coming down is that it, it's it's flexible. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of the challenges with the CARES Act, it, they had certain prescribed times and things mm -hmm. you can do with the funding that limited a lot of a lot of things that the local jurisdictions could do. But from my understanding, this new federal funding that we're getting is going to be flexible, and so that the local jurisdiction can use that money where they see it's really needed. So that's really good. And getting back to um, um, uh, Joshua, Mr. Mahomes's. Um, bringing up mental health, that's so key. And um, um, yeah, I, I was able to look up a couple of local bills, um, Joshua, that I'll, I'll keep the committee informed on, um, HB 461, um, which is a bill by Delegate Washington that actually gives a mental health day for students. So that's mm. going through the um, process. We'll monitor that. And then there's another bill, HB 377, that, that would establish a commission on student uh, behavioral and mental health and report back their their findings. So um, right, right. So there and and again, and I think Ms. Hen alluded to this um, because she's she's absolutely right. Um, we can monitor the state funding, and that's a big portion of you know how do we how do we get psychiatrists? How do we get counselors? You have to pay in order to hire folks, so you need funding. Um, the other piece is. The local funding. There's a local share uh, from our local governments. That's a big part of that. And this this new budget committee uh, will be able to look at that and prioritize about psychiatrists, psychologists, and things of that sort that that you know need need to be in the budget so we can hire more more um, personnel like that because we all know that there's going to be a after you know there's going to be a lot more issues um, as Ms. Bestua said. It things that we never dreamed of before that, that we'll have to deal with now uh, because of COVID. People have, children have lost loved ones. They've lost parents. They've lost time with their their friends. Um, it's 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 any lit, litany of things that will be going on. So um, yeah, this budget committee, local budget committee is, is I think it's going to be timely because they can prioritize those type of things. And then we'll keep an eye on our state partners with the funding that comes through the state too. And, and that's excellent. Today, 
I just heard this report, so you may have heard it as well, that there are over a million, quite a few over a million uh, children who will grow up without grandparents. Yes, ma'am. And um, um, one family in particular was highlighted where both the, the, the parents of both of the ch children's parents died within just weeks of each other. So they have no grandparents. And what it is that grandparents bring to the health and welfare of young people. So they are going to be issues that we've not experienced yes. before with yeah. our young people. So yeah, there's a lot of work that's gotta be done. And we do need to be monitoring. This committee is, is gonna be critical in some very serious ways. We do need to be monitoring, making sure that out of local and state and federal funds, we are actually getting the services that are needed across the county, around the county for our vulnerable young people. And all of them are vulnerable. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions about our priorities? I'm proud. <laughs> oh, pride goes Excellent. before the fall, so let me not be proud. Okay, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to thank um, you, Mr. Baysmore, for being so on top of this. Can we just give him a little applause? Because during session, he is up and working. <laughs> I mean, just nonstop. So thank you, Mr. Thank Baysmore, you. for the work that you have been doing and that you will be doing right up to the end of session and wrapping it all up after session. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mitty. All right, um, lady and gentle, ladies and gentlemen, um, are there any thoughts, any questions um, before we round up? I will say that our next meeting is Thursday, April the 8th. Um, that being said, anyone want to share anything for the good of the order before we conclude? Okay, um, hearing nothing, I again want to thank this committee um, for the work. I am without equivocation sure that the work that we've had to do this year on all levels, all points, all directions um, really has been critical because this has been a very interesting year. So trying to keep our ear to the ground, um, coming up with new things, new directions to go. Um, and I'm seeing the way one committee is blending with another or connecting with another. I remember Dr. Williams said his first ANS meeting that he was convinced that one department didn't know what the other de another department was doing and he wanted to close that gap. And I'm seeing um, closure uh, among the ranks and our committees and what's coming up with committees, what exists. So for this committee, I want to thank you for the work um, this year, whether you're old or new. And I look forward uh, to us finishing up with this legislative session and then having a little hiatus and then coming back and mm -hmm. gearing up and I don't know that um, Ms. Causey and I had talked in the past about that book. We probably won't get that book this year because there'll be so many things going on, but we will at least know that we have put out our first pr legislative priority sheet and we will be ready for our next one. So as we go, start thinking about what you want to see on the next legislative priority sheet. And, or sheets, and maybe we will have a little bit more next year. We will see. But I thank you. Can I get a motion then to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mahumza. We are now adjourned and we'll see you in April. Thank you, Mr. Baysmore and Ms. Rosenberg and Mr. Corns.
<laughs> great Everyone evening. have a great evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. You as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Bye, right, Julie, Mark, Joshua. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I think if I can get out of here. God. Yes, I do.